and we are tracking Hurricane Dorian. We just got the latest 11 p.m. update in from the National Hurricane Center. Winds are still 150 miles per hour. The pressure has de decreased, showing some strengthening with this storm. It is a very dangerous, very powerful storm, almost a Category 5 storm. So let's dive right in and take a look at where it is headed. We do have tropical watches and warnings in effect. The first is a tropical storm watch we have up for portions of eastern Florida. We're also looking at hurricane warnings in place for the Bahamas as well as a hurricane watch where conditions are favorable. The hurricane is going to start impacting the Bahamas in the next 24 hours. So there we are concerned with flash flooding, strong winds and damage. And a lot of them rains. have been told to evacuate. So hopefully a lot of them are doing that or yes. preparing now. Yes, they should have been preparing. They've known that the storm is mm -hmm. coming as well as we Florida has been preparing for the storm over the past couple of days. So here is the current storm. Let's show you the current track. This is the updated 11 p.m. track for this storm as we head into Monday, it's going to continue to slowly move to the west. We've continued to watch the storm slow over the past uh, couple of hours and through today. It's going to continue its slow westward motion through Sunday and Monday night, still at a very powerful Category 4 storm. Winds of 140 miles per hour as it's just off the coast of Florida on Monday night. As we step into Tuesday night, still Category 3, so slowly on the decrease in intensity into Tuesday evening. Winds of 125 miles per hour still just to the east of the center. Central Florida coast. And then as we look ahead towards Wednesday and Thursday, that's when things are still a little unsure of. Currently, we're forecasting the storm to be just off the Carolina coast and anywhere close to the Carolinas, the impacts are going to be felt along the coast and potentially here in the Midlands. So Wednesday to Thursday, that would be our time period of seeing any of those effects. And the storm is uh, forecast to be a category two storm as it makes its way up the coast on those days. So I'll show you the spaghetti plots. We want these plots to be as close together as possible for us to have the best confidence in these models. You can see very early on we have high confidence the plots are very close together as the storm moves west. Beyond that, past Florida, we still have some models suggesting a landfall in the southeast while others keep it offshore. So we're going to be watching the trend of these models. There is a majority of them that keep the storm off coast. So we are going to hope that that continues and then that those continue to shift towards the east. And the European model and the American model, these are two models we watch very closely. They are in a somewhat agreement that is going to continue to ride the coast, so we're going to continue to watch that. Chances for tropical storm force winds, they are high. West Palm Beach to Hilton Head to Charleston through the end of the week, everyone could be seeing gusty winds. And as long with those winds, it's going to be pushing water along the coast, so dangerous storm surge is possible. And if the storm continues to move so slow, some heavy rainfall, potentially flash flooding could also be a concern as well with this. Here is just a look at one forecast for the seven day rainfall total showing higher amounts off the coast where the storm is forecast cast a track showing 10 plus inches of rain little less as you head into the Midlands and the southern and eastern Midlands we're looking at maybe an inch to two inches you can see a very tight gradient with that and then as you head towards the upstate nothing to maybe a quarter of an inch so a couple miles have a big impact with the storm if it shifts a couple miles to the west towards the coast we could be seeing more rain but if it continues the offshore track we will continue to see that rain shift and we won't see as many impacts so it is all a changing situation and just as you were mentioning i think that's been a big question for many people at home what exactly are the possible impacts that the storm could have in our area but another big question is with labor day weekend is there any need to make preparations if you're heading out to the beach should you keep your plan and, uh, and stay home or what should people do this weekend? Yes, so Labor Day weekend here in the Midlands, you are green to go. Go down to the beach uh, to South Carolina and North Carolina. You may see a scattered shower storm. It is in no way related to Dorian. We have until about Tuesday night into Wednesday at the earliest that we could see impacts from these storms. So go out, enjoy the day. If you see a pop-up shower, always be cautious. If you hear thunder, get indoors. So, um, But again, we are not expecting to see any impacts, if any, until middle of the week. Now is Dorian slowing down, speeding up any differences in those past several updates that we've been getting from the National Hurricane Center? Yeah, so the storm is currently slowing down. We'll show you this graphic here. It's moving to the west at 8 miles per hour. Earlier today we were seeing speeds closer to 14, 15 miles per hour and it might not seem like a big deal.
feel, but any slow movement uh, is going to, A, bring more rain to the Bahamas. So the flash flooding situation there, the amount of rainfall is going to be a very dangerous situation on top of the Category 4 storm. But beyond that, if the storm slows down and makes that turn to the north sooner than later, it's better news for us. It could keep it offshore. So the slowdown could mean some good things for us. Now, what should people do now to prepare? Obviously, this is starting to get really close to the Bahamas. Those people already needed to be getting prepared or boarding up what they need to do, evacuate. So we are under a state of uh, emergency right now. Yes. But anything people need to do to go ahead and get ready, what are your suggestions? Yes. So if you live along the coast, you should already have a plan together for any major storm. You should just be in the ready stages, ready to go in case things shift, but we are not in the go phase quite yet here in the Midlands at least. And if you are in the Midlands, just your general storm preparedness kit. Keep some flashlights, maybe a power, a battery radio that would help you get updates from the weather service or from places like us. So we are going to potentially see impacts. Any rain, honestly, we do need here in the Midlands, but not to uh, dissuade from any impacts that the coast could have. We could be dealing with some very heavy rainfall, storm surge, etc. All right, thank you so much, Danielle. Some really good tips. We know you guys are working hard here in our weather center, getting uh, everybody at home prepared and with the latest information on Hurricane Dorian.